color commentator aspect and the okay, and then the, the play by play. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh. Play -by -play. <laughs> yeah, we had the play by play. Okay. And then Andy's going to do all the announcing and the Oscar. What's it like to have to step into the, that kind of a role that you know how big Bruce Buffer is? No, I, I do. I think it's, first of all, it's, it's a, the most amazing sport, genuinely. I'm a, I'm a fan, I buy the t shirts. I, look up on YouTube at the clips and I'm used to major events and I've worked at you know big stadiums across Europe um, but there's a particular way that the UFC does it and I want to be a part of that moving forward and help you know grow it beyond 20 years and I at no stage I'm gonna try and copy what Bruce does Bruce is Bruce and you guys have known him since the beginning and I think the other advantage is there's hopefully a bit of time to evolve with it there's no magic line there's no kind of thing that's going to happen in London on the 8th of March that everyone is, that's the trademark, it's just going to, we're going to grow with it and uh, <coughs> see how it goes, but excited, really excited. Have you spoken to Bruce? Have I did, I met him earlier today, yeah. I met him earlier today, he, uh, he put his digits in my phone and you know, he's kind of, if you need a hand, and one of the reasons I think, you know, they, they wanted us here is what better way to kind of see it in action than just to be ringside in Vegas, uh, you know, at the side of the octagon watching it happen, so we're going to hopefully learn a lot in the next... Um, 24, 48 hours. Now, have you guys worked together before, or how did how did it sort of come about to Perry? Well, we uh, I think there were options, and uh, we we had to do a trial run together. So I guess Dan had to do that with a, with a few other people. He was always a given. Um, so I guess I was the variable. <laughs> he, he thinks that, but I really wasn't. How much of the upcoming talent do you feel like you've been able to get a grasp for that you'll be able to actually see in the octagon coming there's soon? There's more than half of London card that I've worked with before. So I think with the location of, of the stuff we're trying to do, I've worked with these these guys before, you know, the, the fighters, the coaches, the teams. So I'm known to them, which is going to help. Dan obviously has those inroads as well. And being a fighter, uh, he he's going to have that trust to be able to engage, which, you know, I've been able to do as well, but I think Dan just understands it on a, on a whole new level. So together, it's um, it's quite a nice blend, blend, and we were really looking forward to how we were going to structure certain things. And, uh, in the research side, not just the the play-by-play -play and, the, and, the, and the color commentary, but yeah, it's going to be cool. I mean, I've never sat next to someone who's a bona fide world, <laughs> a bona fide world-class uh, mixed martial artist, and that gives me so many outs. You know, I can <laughs> I can talk about something, and Dan's going to get it, and he's going to he's going to come up with something that is going to teach people, Where, and it's going to it's quite educational still, I think, in Europe. So we're gonna we're gonna I think with Dan's personality, hopefully my style I've really come from an educational kind of we've really got to go away from all the negative connotations of this sport, certainly in the UK, because they are there are some roots still there and we need to just yank those out. And um, I've got to be confident that uh, that we're the guys that, that can do that. When when you two did your test run together, did you do an actual UFC live show or did you do, watch a video how, how no. So, yeah, Singapore. Yeah, we, we weren't allowed to watch the card, which was kind of a pain because obviously we're researching the fighters, so and, and they're all they're all new fighters pretty much. I mean, we've not heard of most of them, so we we kind of gone through and made our own notes, and then we'd had a conversation on the phone beforehand to discuss it. But other than that, we just kind of sat down in front of the the screen and watched what these five fights. Did we? Yeah, I think yeah, so. yeah. Just one after the other, as if it was a, a live event and. We had to, you know, pretend that we were in a arena, an arena with a, an audience, and yeah. it was kind of unusual, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, something I wanted to clarify for myself was: uh, your trio will be just for Europe, or will it be for like the other cards, for instance, Australia or another Macau card, or is it just um, going to be European based? Our our region at the moment is going to be uh, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Okay. So we're going to cover all those. I mean, obviously, there's there's scope for us to go into Asia and, and Australia and that, and, and there's no reason why we wouldn't. But as as of right now, there's, there's, there are so many places to visit in just that region alone that we're, we're going to start with that, and we're we're going to kick ass, and then we're going to see what happens from there. Yeah, I think the, we've been really welcomed by um, the Las Vegas office as well, and they and they said you're part of the team. You know, you're not the younger cousin over on the pond. So it's so yeah. There's I think it was kind of communicated. There's there's flexibility. I think I think this is a good opportunity for me to you know not only not only excel at this job, but also be better at mixed martial arts because I'm doing this job. I mean, and I'll be honest, after, after I got knocked out against uh, Condit in uh, London, I really struggled to just kind of sit and watch UFC events. 
which and that was it was a difficult time because I've, I've always been a UFC fan. I wanted to fight in the UFC because it's in the UFC. You know? So when I couldn't sit down and watch the fights and enjoy them like a fan, I, I, I lost some of my passion for the sport. Um, so then, I, then it was just a case of studying tape for fighters, and and then I'm not. I don't really feel a great feel very involved in the sport. So this year has has, has given me time to kind of like fall in love with the sport again. Sure. You know, become a fan. And I've been researching fights since uh, you know since before Christmas for this you know potential new job, and I'm just loving watching the UFC again. And and that's for me that's the biggest reward of doing this job is that I can just be a fan. I mean. I am quite outspoken, and, and that's kind of a part of, of, you know, how the fans know me, um, particularly from early on in my career with the, with the Davis fight and such. Um, so, the, g going into this role, nothing's going to change. I, I said this yesterday. I asked this question: If we get a situation like the Caleb Starlin's fight, and there's one guy and he's just backpedaling, running away, I'm not going to be. I mean, John might be very politically correct and be like, "Well, you know, he's being very defensive. He's, you know, he's a cad fighter." I'm going to say, "I don't know what this guy's problem is." run away from the fight and I don't mind calling that out you know what I mean and I think that that's important because um, the, the, fan, the thing is the thing is if, if I don't acknowledge that the fans aren't going to relate to me the fans aren't going to connect with me because I'm not calling in what I'm seeing I'm sugarcoating it and being and making it a UFC product and I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing as a fight fan if the guy's avoiding the fight I'm going to say it and I think that that is going to help me um, Help me be on the same page as the fans, because I'm coming from the fans' perspective, and I want to see you guys come and put it on the line. So yeah, I will be quite critical. Yeah.